On this episode, we talk Chamber of Commerce, we talk at Wine Deals, the greatest place to buy wine on Instagram, and when is the right time to have an assistant. Chuck, and this is episode 135 of the Ask Gary V Show. It is wonderful to be back in the main saddle uh, after a wonderful three weeks of spending an enormous amount of time with the kids. Tremendous, just a ton of kids' time. Uh, got to spend a good amount of time really putting a lot of meat on the Ask Gary V, the book. Uh, which was nice. It feels like that's always a burden on my head, these damn books, so that was good to get done. Uh, just really connected with the family, got really uh, zoned in on the New York Jets season. Have my preview show of the upcoming season on Friday, look for that. Um, and uh, and just been missing you guys at the Vayner Nation, got to interact with you guys a little bit on Instagram, and so that was good, but now we're back in full swing, uh, and, uh, and that's that. So India, uh, let, India's on vacation. Stunwin <laughs> with facial hair. <laughs> the new Stunwin with the improved. When I lack in India's hair. I'm right, you're making it there. Yeah. Well, Stunwin, let's uh, get into the show. Didn't even give you a chance to get Nope, it. <laughs> no chance. That's an Indian eyes thing. All right, fine, fine. <laughs> Gregory asks, if you ever become the CEO of, of a local chamber of a community of 12,000, what would be the first thing you would do? Uh, if I became the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce for a small group of 12,000 people, 12,000 members or 12,000 people in a town? Community, yeah. a command, uh, you know, that, I'm a very big fan of scaling the unscalable, right? I, I talk a lot about engagement, one-on-one uh, -on -one engagement, Twitter videos, depth versus width. When, when you're talking about a town of 12,000 people, even if we're answering this incorrectly, and it's a, it's a membership of 12,000, it's still a very small number in the scheme of things. So what I would fundamentally do is create a, uh, a infrastructure to allow me to connect one by one uh, with every single member of the chamber, and even considering if it's a 12,000 person community, the thousand to four thousand people that really care about business in town uh, and connect with them one by one via coffee, via Skype, via phone call, uh, as much face to face as possible uh, and ask them to uh, reverse engineer their objectives of meaning, what can the chamber do for you? What do you want out of it? I'd also ha have a better understanding of what I was trying to get out of it if I was the CEO of that so I don't know if that's fees, I don't know if it's something as simply noble as making business better in town, if that's the objective at hand. Uh, that's a little bit of a tongue in cheek for the people that don't get my humor in this. I think I get razzed a little bit too much for this as I was reading plenty of comments on these three weeks. Um, I Basically, my job would be to make the, uh, the business environment in this community better and I think the number one way to do that is to get people aligned. I think leadership comes from getting an entire group of people aligned on a mission. I actually think the most effective way to do that is to actually understand each individual person's goals and objectives and then come and find that little sweet spot that is the closest thing to the overall masses that brings value across the board and then go backwards. What's the number one thing that I can do that that brings value to all 600 people at VaynerMedia, that brings value to all 12,000 members, and then go down the list to where the number 10 thing maybe brings value to half of the people, but it's still better than to three people. So I reverse engineer by listening up front, collecting the data, and then executing against the top 10 things that will bring value to everybody in the organization. Sweet fire off the gate. Can I get, can I get a fire emoji here? I don't know. If, <laughs> <laughs> a little editing for you, D-Rock. Sam asks, what is one of your favorite questions asked by an interviewee for a position at VaynerMedia? Uh, I don't like when interviewees talk. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> what is my favorite question 
<laughs> By the way, it's, there was a little bit of a truth in that statement. It's, it's something I've been giving a lot of thought to is, uh, is I'm live. You, you got something? Oh, AJ. Yeah, AJ, AJ. Did you see the outside the lines report? No. Oh, AJ, break some news here on the Ask Gary. I'm breaking a scoop. I, I see you're happy too, I, so it's not the Jets are in big trouble again. No, it's about Spygate. Oh new my report. God. What? So, three aspects that came out of the report. Uh, one, a owner confidentially told outside the lines that he thought the flake gate was a makeup call for Spygate. Makes sense. Uh, owners are probably generally happy with how Godell handled it, even though he lost. Yep. Um, outside the lines is reporting, not can't be completely based in fact, that they think Spygate was 40 games worth of tape, at least. Wow. And um, there was one other fact. Uh, Mike Martz, uh, former coach of the Rams, yes. on the record is saying that he put out a statement saying he was satisfied with the investigation, but that Godell called him and asked him to do it. And Martz is now on the record with outside lines saying that he believes Spygate was really bad and that... They lost he, the Super Bowl because of it. He didn't say that, but he... I'm saying it. <laughs> but he's saying Godell asked him to put out the statement. He didn't believe the it. statement that he put out. I love it. Outside the lines, huge story exploding Great. right now. I love it. We hate the Patriots around here. <laughs> and that's just the bottom line. Wow. That's good. I caught a question about Deflate Gate from the You know what? Show. Is that right? Yeah. Th- that being said, I do want to say the following. I'm not upset about the Tom Brady ruling. A lot of you asked me. I'm happy that he's playing. I'm happy. All right. I'm serious, by the way. I'd rather him play. We don't play them in those four games. Uh, interviewee questions? Uh, oh, interviewee. Um, <laughs> uh, Yeah, you know, the truth is I don't have a really great answer for this. Uh, I I like when interviewees ask me honest questions. I think a lot of times they're just mailing it in. They went to some website and that says seven best questions to ask during an interview or they had an interview coach or their dad told them to say something. I hate mailed in bullshit. I like when they, or when they pander to me like, Gary, what are you gonna do when you buy the Jets? Or the, like, I don't need that either. Though I like it, I like being coddled, I don't need it. We're there to try to help them, help me, help us, help them as a team. And the truth is what I'm looking for. So, you know, not that they have to go the other way and ask me a hard hitting question either. I don't care if it's, if, it, if they truly wanna know what I'm gonna do when I buy the Jets, then I'm happy. If they truly wanna ask me like, is the vulnerability of this company your charisma and personal brand and what happens without you, if they truly mean it and they're not just trying to win points on asking the hard hitting question, um, you know, I think that that has always been my thing. I don't want anybody going too far in either direction of bullshit. Just keep it in the lane of something that really matters to you and so sometimes I like, uh, you know, now it's spurring up some memories. Sometimes I like when they ask about like, how much can they contribute to the 401k? Or, or do you really truly allow unlimited vacation time? Like, like I like when it's just actually coming from something they want to know for themselves. I feel like I'm there to provide value to them. I don't think an interviewee is trying to sell me on them to work for me. I think I'm trying to sell them on working for me. And so I really flip interviews on their head that way. And that's an interesting thing altogether. Maybe I just love selling so much. Um, maybe I'm trying from the day we meet, create an environment of, of safety, which I'm very proud of that I think I create here. Uh, that's the answer. Cool. Uh, video question from Vineyard Paul. Vineyard Paul. I like Vineyard Paul. Hi, Gary Vaynerchuk on Holidays here, but I've still got a question for you. What have you learned from Wine Deals, your Instagram account, the best place to buy wine in America? Link me up here. What have you learned from your Wine Deals Instagram account that small wineries can still use to make a buck on Instagram? Cheers. Good job, and your Paul. Oh. On Holidays here, but I've still got a question for you. Oh, that was, that was on loop? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Does it loop? Yeah. yeah. Sort of oh, yeah, 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 on desktop, I, yeah. Uh, Vineyard Paul, great question. Um, I've learned what I thought. Uh, with creating wine deals, uh, the greatest place on Instagram to buy wine, uh, uh, which is people are disproportionately paying attention to Instagram, plus Instagram has built-in word of mouth functionality. People, by habit, when they see something on Instagram that they think somebody else is gonna be interested in, tag their friends in the comments. They leave a comment with that person's user handle because everybody's paying attention to Instagram, they're seeing that alert, then they are then checking it out. I have not seen anything work like this since early email. 
early, and to early Twitter, I'm sorry, this is very early email, very early Twitter, where anybody who's on the platform is disproportionately paying attention to the platform in a way that creates aggressive word of mouth infrastructure. Uh, so we're selling a lot of wine. Um, we haven't even taken it that serious. Steve, you're about to get really, really in there. You know, we're kind of in the summer months, which is fun. Um, but now here we are, in the, you know, as I start seeing, you know, it's funny, when I start seeing leaves go or- orange and, you know, and all that stuff, like, that's when I know it's time for money, right? Because I came from retail, and the fourth quarter is what, the, I mean, literally this day, I'm gonna literally get goosebumps. This exact day, for me, the day I stopped going to school, was the greatest day of my life because it was the day that shit was about to get serious at Wine Library because we were about to do a lot of sales in these next 16 to 20 weeks and football and no school. I mean, just like the best. So um, as much as I love running VaynerMedia and as much as this is gonna be a much bigger company and as much as this is awesome, I'm still a merchant at heart and I, as I'm fired up to, you know, here today and ready to go, but there, I, I, I can't lie, a little extra kicker because I love selling stuff and, uh, and me and Brandon, even last night I'm like, with Brandon, I'm like, here we go. Like, I'm just <laughs> so pumped for this Saturday. I had an interesting Instagram uh, post uh, a couple days ago about this upcoming Saturday in the store. I've got surprise gifts for people. They're going to see Brandon. I won't be there. Don't want to fool anybody. Uh, uh, and so, and so, uh, Vineyard Paul, I think, I, I think that people's attention is on this platform and that you need to be storytelling on it and I do think it's a tremendous direct response selling right hook platform and wine deals, as many of you guys know, is straight right hooks. It's three wine offers at discount prices and buy the end. Like, there's no thrills. It's, you know, clever Instagram-like pictures to the best of our ability uh, and, uh, and, but it's the wine. And so uh, the attention graph is real. Uh, people's uh, word of mouth infrastructure is real. Um, and we're picking up a lot of customers and it's going well. Jordan asks, what is your biggest goal heading into the home stretch of 2015? My biggest goal professionally is where I'm gonna go with this is to uh, set up VaynerMedia for its biggest year, uh, get all my venture capital uh, and investing uh, world in order, a lot of transition, a lot of exciting stuff coming that you'll be hearing about, wrap up, uh, wrap up the book, um, very much focus on uh, Resi and Brave and Faithbox, uh, the businesses that I'm, uh, and Grape Story, the businesses that I'm uh, deeper involved with. Uh, get deeper into the HR of 100 employees at VaynerMedia that I haven't uh, gone as far with and have that personal connection with. Dismantle uh, the Ask Gary V show uh, through the winter and, and put out better and better, better content. Uh, work closely with DRock to, uh, to make a couple of killer original videos, uh, work with you Steve to make wine deals really powerful and I think we can. Um, uh, so those are some of the things off the top of my head. Hopefully have my first really exciting football season in five years, four years. Uh, I really am very optimistic or maybe not. You'll find out Friday on my football preview show. Um, and, uh, and start the process and most of all, Number one, now I'll put a little personal in there. Uh, continue the workout regimen, which is, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm starting to go into muscle gaining mode. Uh, and, uh, and start the process of hacking more time with the kids uh, from a Monday through Friday standpoint than I have, uh, whether that's walking to school, whether it's coming home early. It's, it's not built into the infrastructure of September the way I wanted it to be. Maybe because I got so much time in August that it didn't populate. But um, I'm definitely, in the same way that if this show was going on the year before I started working out, I know it started right when I started working out, you would have heard me talk a lot about working out, working out, working out. I'm a very smoke than fire kind of individual. Uh, so I'm starting the smoke on this, on this kids hack thing. Because uh, the extremes are working but I'm trying to find a little more time. Tim asks, when do you know it's time to hire an assistant? Tim asks, when do you know it's time to hire an assistant? Show title, by the way. What's that? Show title. Yeah, this is a great show title. Let's go with that, D-Rock. Uh, you know, for me, it was Matt Sinemer, who worked in the order department at Wine Library, who is now a lead account strategist in our LA office. 
uh, who's the only employee I took from Wine Library to VaynerMedia when we started it. I have enormous heart for him. He's also battling Brandon, my best friend, who runs Wine Library for the championship in our fantasy baseball league this year. So it's Brandon versus Matt. I'm watching that very carefully for these next 30 days. Uh, enjoying that. Um, so uh, for me it was that I started to have to be places and I wasn't completely in charge or had all the leverage. What I mean by that is when I ran Wine Library and I was literally in the store 12 hours a day, every day, I didn't schedule a lot of things and if I did, I went off memory and if they showed up and I screwed up and made them wait an hour, I was okay with that. Even though that was disrespectful of someone else's time, I was the biggest wine buyer that they had and they were there to sell me and I was okay with that. When I started having to show up to conferences, do interviews, when, when no longer did I have disproportionate leverage that if I was off on time and had to make somebody wait, um, and this is all predicated because I'm disorganized and I'm not anal and I'm not into the details, um, that's when I changed and so Matt, was in, I said, Matt, do you want to be my assistant? Uh, I just need it. I'm starting to travel, I'm starting to do other things, my, my world's evolving. I need to stop being disrespectful. Um, I need to fix this, I need to figure it out. And I, was, I felt that I was very unschedulable. That I couldn't follow a schedule. In the same way that I didn't think that I, I would ever work out. And I would tell you that having an assistant and following a schedule and working out have been two of the biggest confidence builders to me to know that I'm capable of changing because up until that point, the first 35 years of my life, I just went with whatever was easy to me, which is why I so mailed in school. Following a schedule and working out make me believe that I could have been an A student where I used to not believe that to be the case. So that's exciting. That, that, that excites me for the next 40 years of my career that I'll be able to mold and do other things while still completely betting on my strengths but trying to round out, not round out my weaknesses in a way that's scalable that doesn't take disproportionate amount of energy, right? It's, it's, if you've noticed, I've hacked it with other human beings, an assistant a full-time trainer. So like if I can use somebody else's skills in my ecosystem, um, that, that's, that, that seems interesting. So I, for me, the time to uh, have an assistant was when I felt that I was disrespecting other people. It's an interesting answer, but it's the true answer. Statement of the day. You know, I'm just looking for, uh, I'm looking for uh, your comments uh, on this show um, because the feedback loop has been immensely powerful and it's giving me ideas of how we're going to evolve the show uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, also, I'd love to know what you've been up to the last three weeks. I miss you. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. <laughs>